Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Allah is a great wonder, greater than anything we can imagine, greater than anything in this world. Allah is a great mystery, a great unknown. And we are truly incapable of understanding that mystery, of knowing that mystery. Allah is amongst us. He is in the world, but he's not of the world. He's inside of man, but he's not man. He's inside our hearts, but he's not our heart. He's within light, but Allah is not light. Allah is within the fruits, but he's not the taste of the fruits. He's within the flowers, but he's not the fragrance of the flowers. Allah is within love, but not in the way that we understand love. He's mingled within everything, yet he is far beyond everything. He's far beyond what we can see. He's far beyond what we can hear. He's far beyond what we can taste. He's far beyond what we can stand, what we can smell. He's far beyond what we can feel or we can understand. He lives in a place that is perfect unity and effulgence. For us to know him, we can't know him with our eyes or our ears or our nose or our mouth. We have to come to know him in a different way. The amount of wisdom that we have, the amount of knowledge that we have, is just a tiny particle within a particle of what he is. He is effulgent and he is without limits. He is without decrease. Every being and every heart can take whatever it wants from him and he is never diminished. We must understand the good that is Allah and we must merge with that good. In a very mysterious way, when that merging occurs, the possibility of coming to know him begins to exist. Our feelings and our emotions don't truly encounter Allah. The closest that we can come in the beginning to encounter Allah is through the Sheikh. The Sheikh is manifest on this earth as a human being and he carries within him the qualities that are God. Now, when we see these qualities, we begin to understand that something is happening here that is beyond the normative encounters that we have in this world. The first time I met the Sheikh, I was spellbound because all of a sudden I was in front of what appeared to be a human, but 
his nature and his qualities were different. There was a resonance that came off him that I could feel. There was a peacefulness in his presence that I could feel. There was a serenity in his being that I could feel. And even though he was speaking a language that was totally foreign to me, he came from a country on the other side of the world. He didn't look like anybody else that I knew. An immediate connection was formed the first time I saw him because his inner essence bypassed all the superficiality of the world and went directly towards the truth. And I realized that there was something about him that was unique in this world. And that unique thing needed to be known. That unique thing had to be brought into my existence. That unique thing had to be something that I became. And that's how the journey starts for man on the path to becoming Insan Kamal. It starts with a recognition that there are qualities, that there is a way of being, that there is a station that's different than what we ordinarily see in the world. There's something that eclipses all that. And through coming to know that, it's possible to come close to Allah. But of course, to get to that state, to get to the state where a sheikh appears for you, to get to the state where a teacher appears for you, you have to be ready for a teacher. It is said that when you are ready for a teacher, a teacher will find you. And what needs to be done is when you're found, you need to acknowledge what is going on in your life. And you need, you need to acknowledge that all of a sudden, your life has taken a change and is now being guided in a way that it has never been guided before, that it is now being guided in a straight path, that it is now being guided in a true path, that it is now being guided towards reality. And when you're with the sheikh, you begin to be able to differentiate between the essence and the superficial. You begin to be able to differentiate between the carnival that is this world and the truth that lies within a man who has given himself over to God. Now, when we take on following a sheikh, what does following a sheikh mean? Well, what it means is taking on the qualities that the sheikh has. Because without taking on those qualities, you're not really accomplishing anything. But understanding the qualities and imbibing the qualities is not enough. We have to bring those qualities into action. We have to act out those qualities as opposed to just trying to understand them. Without acting out those qualities, it's like a finger writing on water. You see the finger, you see its movement, but you can't tell what it's writing because as soon as it touches the water, everything disappears 
that it's raining. So we need to go beyond the superficial. And we need to enter into the action that is the sheikh's action. Now, Allah is called Rahman Ya Rahman Ya Rahim, the merciful and the compassionate. This is an act towards his creation. He is merciful towards his creation, and he is compassionate towards his creation. In other words, he gives towards his creation. He gives everything towards his creation. If we look around, we will notice that everything we see, everything we hear, everything we have, everything we touch, every piece of knowledge that we've learned has all been given to us by him. It's all come from him. Now, since this is the situation, what is our relationship to our Lord supposed to be? Well, for starters, there needs to be gratitude. For starters, we have to understand that all of these things are being done on our behalf. We may be in the middle of a hurricane, but for some reason that hurricane moves around us. We may be in the middle of difficulties, but all of a sudden those difficulties are lifted. Uh, we may be traveling into a snowstorm and all of a sudden that snowstorm is moved. How come these things happen? There are those who will tell you that all of these things are happenstance. They happen by accident. Just like the people say, the world was created by accident. That all the animals were created by accident. But then there are those who understand that there is a power behind all of this, a power that is merciful and compassionate and protective and gracious and effulgent, and it keeps giving to its creation. So there is a creator and the creator gives. So if we are the recipient of that giving, what are we supposed to be? We're supposed to be grateful. And once we understand that we're supposed to be grateful, then we begin to understand that we also have to be able to spread out what we're giving to others. What the Sheikh does, what the Sheikh did, what he continues to do, is he continues to give guidance to humanity. He gives guidance through to humanity through his qualities and through displaying his qualities in a public and private way so that you know and understand what he's capable of doing. Love can be a term that is not understood. It can be abstract, but when you sit in front of a insan kamal, when you sit in front of a ketub, a wise being, love is no longer abstract. It's real. You can feel the love that comes forth from that being. And as that love encounters us, we are altered by that love. All of a sudden, we know what love is in a way that we never knew before because we encountered real love. We encountered unconditional love. And the sheikh 
does that for everybody in his circle. He brings real love. He brings unconditional love. He brings transformational love. He brings healing love. He, he brings love that can change us from the way we were into something else. And what is that something else? Well, what is the end result or what is the intention for the end result of this phantasmagorical journey that we're on? The intention should be to come to know our creator. The intention should be to come to know reality and understand reality. And who have we met? Who do we know that lives within reality? The Sheikh. So if the Sheikh lives within reality, our purpose is to become like the Sheikh. Our purpose is to become the Sheikh because the Sheikh is the true example of what humanity is capable of being, of what humanity is. And we need to become that which is true man. And what does true man do? He does away with all the differences in his being. He sees everyone as he sees himself. He doesn't see color. He doesn't see religion. He doesn't see nationality. He doesn't see differences. He sees all men as having an equality that brings them to the state of unity which is what Allah, in fact, is. Allah is unity. Allah lives in a place of unity and effulgence. Allah lives in a place of no differences. Allah lives in a place where he gives unto everything. And <clears throat> for us to find that place, we have to lose ourselves. We have to lose ourselves in him. And the reason we have to lose ourselves is until we lose ourselves, there are still the remnants of self-motive. There are still the remnants of self-business. There are still the remnants of self-aggrandizement. We're trying to make ourselves more, and that is the focus of our life. And in most of the world, that is the focus of life, to make yourself more, to include others in yourself, to include others as equal to yourself, to include others as being part of a unified whole and understanding that <clears throat> is very rare in this world. Even in religious circles, it's very rare in this world because the religions have taken themselves and made themselves inst into institutions with rules and regulations. And these rules and regulations must be followed. And very often, these rules and regulations are such so that you can be differentiated from every other religion. Well, the military is like that. It creates a situation where everyone else is the enemy and they, your army, your platoon, uh, your force is the only one that's correct. And what are they teaching you to do? They're teaching you to kill everyone else. And what are they doing on your behalf? They're taking you into the battlefield 
where you will be killed. Metaphorically, the religions that don't teach unity, which is almost all of them, the religions that don't teach the fact that all men are equal are taking you to a spiritual death. They're supposed to be taking you to a spiritual revival, but in fact, they're taking you to a spiritual death because they're telling you the opposite of what is true. They are telling you that somehow you are separate from all other men. Somehow you are better than all other men. Somehow Allah has chosen you over all other men because this religion that you are in is the religion that he has chosen. Allah has no religion. Allah has no specific like for a certain people as opposed to other people. And again, when you were with the Sheikh, you saw this. The Sheikh didn't have favorites. He treated all people equally. He loved all people equally. And everyone who came before him was treated the same, whether they had just come for the first time or they had been coming for years. The Sheikh didn't differentiate. The Sheikh was like the sun. He shone on everybody. The Sheikh is like the rain. He rains on everybody. It's up to each of us to bring out our buckets and collect that rain or to make sure we get out of the shade and stand in the sun so we get the vitamin D that it's giving us or whatever health benefits that it's giving us. But we have to do the work to bring ourselves into that state where he helps us. So what is it that we begin to do when we become appropriate? We begin to aid other people in the way he aided other people. We begin to assist other people in the way he assists other people. So Allah gives, the Sheikh gives, we watch how the Sheikh gives, and we imitate what the Sheikh does, and we begin to give. We spread the truth. We spread assistance. We spread through charity whatever we can in order to help other people. We are not merely centered around ourselves. When you have found a fruit, that's tasty. You look for that fruit again. And the fruit only becomes tasty when the fruit has ripened, when it becomes soft. Like that, when our heart ripens, when our heart becomes soft, that's when we can take on the qualities of God. When our heart is hard, the qualities of God cannot penetrate it. And we are centered on protecting ourselves and doing for ourselves. But when the heart becomes soft, when we become tender hearted, then all of a sudden we can feel the pain of others. We can feel the hunger of others. We can feel the need of others. And we can act towards those needs. But this is a process. And 
This is a process that we have to intend and we have to enter into. One of the things that will happen when the heart becomes tender is tears will begin to flow. And these tears flow for many, many, many different reasons. Some of the tears flow from the understanding that we have been hard-hearted for so long. What kept us from understanding the truth? The next thing that happens is the tears flow because for the first time, we are getting a semblance of what it means to be close to our creator because it's in action towards others through our tender heartedness that we come to know our Lord. This is how we get an encounter with God's grace. We do duty towards the world. The Sheikh is constantly doing duty to, towards the world. The Sheikh has no interest in anything but doing duty. His life is entirely given on behalf of others. Can we give our life partially on behalf of others? Can we do something in our life on a regular basis that helps other people? If we can't, then we should think about what it is that we need to do in order to be able to do something like that. Now, within this group, there are people who provide food for the hungry. There are people who provide health understanding to people who need education. There are people who provide so many different things for other people. They talk to the ones they know about truth and try to bring them on the straight path. If you work on yourself, eventually you'll get to the point where you work on others. The Quran says that if you save one life, you have saved the entire universe. And what is that one life that you have to save? That one life you have to save is your own life. And when that life is saved, then it can become of service to other lives. It can't do that until each of us finds the truth within ourselves, until each of us finds empathy with our Lord, until each of us creates a relationship with our Lord. And one of the major ways of creating this relationship with our Lord is to speak to our Lord. We can begin by talking about the ordinary things in our life, the difficulties in our life, the problems in our life, and help for resolution of these problems. But then we should eventually go into performing the zikr. Performing the zikr becomes an essential part of our existence. The zikr is an acknowledgement of the unity of creation. The zikr is an acknowledgement of the unity of God. The zikr is the acknowledgement of Allahu Akbar, the oneness of God. And if we can bring that into our being, then we can begin to do true prayer. We have a motor within us and a mechanism within us that breathes and it breathes constantly. The breath doesn't stop until we're gone. The breath keeps going and going and going. We have to take the zikr and attach it to the breath. If we can do that, 
then the zikr will go within us into every pore in our body. It'll go through our blood. It'll go through our tissues. It'll go through every single part of us because our breath goes through every single part of us. So we need to, during the day, attach the zikr to our breath. I do not exist, only you exist. I do not exist with the out breath, only you exist when we inhale. So we exhale, I do not exist, and we inhale, only you exist. And once we get this moving, it becomes like a water pump. You can pump water out of the ground and it takes a while to get it started. But once it gets started, it becomes a constant flow. So we need to make that zikr, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, a constant flow within us. And then it's a whole body prayer. All of us is involved in that prayer. All of us is acknowledging the unity of creation and the oneness of our Lord. All of us is acknowledging truth. And all of us is turning away from the carnival that is the world. Inside, we are worshiping God. Outside, what goes on, goes on. It is of no interest to us. The superficial is no longer what it is that we chase. The superficial is no longer what it is we desire because our desire has been put under control. Our mind has been put under control. We no longer listen to the mind and to the desire because now we are busy finding God and creating a relationship with God. It is through this work that we find the victory in our lives. It is through this intention that we fulfill the reason that we were put on earth. It is through this intention that we fulfill the purpose of creation. Allah created man because he wanted a creation that could know him and he could know it. And as long as man ignores God, that purpose of creation isn't being fulfilled. It's only when we turn towards God and turn away from the world that we begin to fulfill the purpose of creation. And we need to understand that. We need to be grateful that we are here. This birth is a very, very rare thing. This life is a very, very rare thing. And we have to be grateful to God every moment. Now, what happens is, when danger comes to us and we're in the midst of difficulty and God somehow saves us, all of a sudden we're cognizant of our gratitude. All of a sudden we become aware how we are indebted to our Lord. But every morning when we wake up, we should be aware that we are indebted to our Lord. Every breath that we take, we should be aware that we are indebted to our Lord. Every step that we take, every move that we make, we should be aware that we are indebted to our Lord. And this is how the relationship starts. As we understand that we are a created being, created by our Lord, indebted to our Lord, our egocentric insanity begins to fade away, and we stop thinking about ourselves so much. We stop thinking about our needs so much, and we think more about what is the status of my relationship with my Lord. And when we get to that place, 
then we begin to become real. The qualities of mercy and compassion become part of us. And the actions of mercy and compassion are the actions of our hands and our feet and our mouth. We speak mercy and compassion. We walk mercy and compassion. We are mercy and compassion. And when you reach that state where you are God's qualities, then are you your name or are you something else? Have you transcended this human form and have you entered into that godly state? The great sheikh said, Anul Haq, I am reality. And I am reality because I no longer exist. Only God exists. So may it come to pass that all of us are grateful for this life. And all of us understand the purpose for this creation. And all of us do the best that we can to fulfill Allah's intention, which is to come to know him and come to lose ourselves. So may we lose ourselves in the truth and find ourselves in our Lord. Amin, amin. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.